Hello! In this video, I'll be remodeling this house listed on Zillow in The Sims 3. This is a three bed, two bath, single story manufactured home. It's about 1,500 square feet on nearly three acres of land and sold for about $500,000 in 2022. If that price seems a bit high, it's probably due to the location. This home is on the coast of California, about 100 miles north of San Francisco, in the town of Wallala. Hopefully I'm saying that right. That's the pronunciation according to Wallala.com, which says the name comes from the original inhabitants, the Kashaya Pomo, and it's derived from a phrase meaning where the water flows down, a reference to the river that meets the Pacific Ocean there. It's a really beautiful area. I've been camping near there a few times with my dog, and while I can't actually afford a home there, I think it would be an ideal place to live, which is why I was snooping around there on Zillow. All right, now moving on to The Sims version. I recreated the house to the best of my abilities. There wasn't a floor plan on the listing, so I did have to guess in a few areas, but it should be a pretty faithful replica. The house is intended for the Baker family, who are one of the families in the base game family bin. The Baker family consists of two elder retired sims, Heathcliff and Svetlana, their young adult daughter Becky, and her toddler son Topher. I gave them a budget of 100,000 simoleons for the renovation. I don't plan to make any major changes to the layout of the existing home, but I do want to add an in-law unit in the backyard for Becky, um, put an office in the larger like, garage size shed, and spruce up the landscaping a bit. If you want to download the before version of this house, maybe renovate it yourself. It's available on The Sims 3 Exchange, which I'll link in the description. Um, I'll upload and link the after version as well, I just haven't done it at the time of this recording. So I started by working on the kitchen because it was the only room I had a design aesthetic in mind for. I wanted to do a sort of like French country thing, um, like stone floor, crisp blue and white patterns, um, but more through the lens of the early 2000s. So a little brighter, some fussier window dressings, and maybe just a little bit too much going on. I definitely had Christopher Lowell of Interior Motives and The Christopher Lowell Show in mind when designing this house, probably because I was watching old episodes of Interior Motives on YouTube around the time, um, but if you're not familiar with the show, it was like a DIY interior design show that ran in the late 90s and early 2000s. Each episode had a theme like um, small spaces or like bring the outdoors in or something and then a bunch of different segments like interviews with designers, little DIY projects, um, profiles of like real historical homes. Um, but the show was really carried by the host who was like at least as much a performer as a designer. My mom had it on all the time when I was a kid and as a kid I just like assumed this is a show made by adults, for adults, um, this is the way things are done on these shows. Uh, but viewing it now as an actual grown person, uh, I can appreciate how unique some of the artistic choices were um, that were made on the show. Like the uh, cold opens for every episode that have like a character and costume bit, um, which is kind of giving like Dean from Community, but it works. Um, it's a fine balance of entertainment and information, so I'd recommend checking out an episode if you haven't. The design doesn't necessarily hold up because that's just not how interior design works, it's ephemeral, but the show as a whole does, it's pretty entertaining, so. All that to say, with Christopher Lowell in mind designing this house, I wanted it to be a little bit overworked in some areas. Definitely wasn't going for like a clean minimalist vibe by any means. Um, unfortunately, that approach isn't totally compatible with Sims gameplay because Sims tend to need like a 10 foot radius of empty space to accomplish anything. So I did try to make the house playable and limit the clutter, but I wanted it to feel lived in for a long enough period of time that like a collection of tchotchkes had just accumulated naturally. At the end of the day, it is supposed to be a grandparent's home, so I wanted it to look, you know, lived in and loved and built around a specific family. Um, Part of that is like the banquette seating there in the dining area. For me, any sort of like built-in feature, uh, like inlaid shelves or cabinets or benches that utilize the more permanent physical structure of a home to address the little like comfort and storage needs of daily life, uh, make it feel like the home is built with the inhabitants in mind rather than just indifferent to their existence, which is 
how most apartments I've lived in feel and, and how the house, like, as initially listed on Zillow looked, just pretty blank and cold. Um, not what I was going for with the finished product. One of the other items I wanted in the house to make it feel homier was a wood-burning stove. If I'm on Zillow, I'm usually looking at houses in more rural areas of Northern California, um, like the one I'm doing here, and a lot of them have these wood stoves as heating. Unfortunately, the closest item to what I had in mind that's available in The Sims 3 is this kind of groovy 1960s cone fireplace, um, but I tried to make it look more like a cast iron texture and put a wall with some tin plating behind it to make this corner a bit more rustic. I'm sure there's a good custom content wood stove option out there, but I don't usually have any build by CC in my game. I tend to get overwhelmed with all the options already available, um, especially considering all the time I usually sink into messing around in the color wheel. Um, and for this build, I actually used a website with like a color palette generator called Coolers to make my color wheel tinkering more efficient. Uh, this is the palette I was trying to follow for both the kitchen and the living room. It's like a lighter sky blue, a dark navy blue, a sort of cherry red, something in between beige and yellow, and an off-white. Obviously none of those are official names for those colors, um, but those aren't colors I naturally gravitate toward, and overall this house isn't like my own personal style or anything, so it was useful to have the palette up to keep me on track, um, but I will note that just having the ability to generate a palette and visualize colors next to one another does not guarantee that you'll come up with something aesthetically pleasing. I also used that tool for the primary bedroom, and the palette I came up with um, for that one was impressively hideous, which you'll see later. So, fun tool, but won't give you good taste if you're lacking in that department. Um, and as you can see here, even with the palette to guide me, I still spent about 30 minutes of my life deciding on pillow fabric for that armchair, and then endlessly rearranging various small objects on surfaces. And yes, I am that bad in real life too, so if anyone out there has tips on combating decision paralysis with regard to interior design or really any aspect of life, please leave them in the comments. Could use the help. Okay, so after putting finishing touches on the living room, some plants, a record player in the corner, and then like a little antique looking mirror that's going to go between the two windows there. Um, I moved on to the bedrooms, starting with what would be like the guest bedroom. So to me, a guest bedroom or a spare room in a house is usually the gathering place for all of the miscellaneous furniture that someone accumulates over a lifetime, especially if it's no longer deemed nice enough for the primary bedroom or to be out in the living room. So with that in mind, I wanted this room to have furniture that didn't necessarily look like parts of the same set or from the same decade, but that would be arranged and presented with intention, um, like the rooms in these photos, to come together and create a cozy little space. So in my mind, like that kind of garish green paint color that's on the little wardrobe in the corner, which is also on the desk chair, would be like someone's DIY attempt to create cohesion between two disparate and possibly scuffed up pieces of older furniture. And that green paint um, actually appears again in the next bedroom over, as though there's really just cans of that paint lying around, which is a silly detail to make up in my head, but I am playing a life simulation game here, so cat's out of the bag. I like playing house. It's a fun time. But anyway, this room is truly intended to be a guest bedroom. It's not for any member of the Baker household, and I know overnight guests aren't really a thing in The Sims 3 unless you have foreign visitors, like with World Adventures, or a child or teen who's having a sleepover, but Svetlana's lifetime aspiration is super popular, which is to be friends with at least 20 sims, and that's a whole bunch of friends, so I figured it would be fitting for her to have a space in the home to host overnight guests as needed. Um, and again, endless tinkering here with the little decorative objects, but 
once everything's finalized with this little guest bedroom and Svetlana has a place to do the whole hospitality thing, um, I redid the next bedroom over in the front of the house. Um, like I've said, this house is intended for the Baker family, which is a multi-generational family, and I do create a separate little house in the back of the lot for Becky and Topher, but I also wanted a nursery in the main house so that there would be a toddler-friendly space for Topher to hang out with his grandparents while his mom is out at work or whatever. So, I did look at Pinterest photos of contemporary nurseries before doing this room, but they all seemed a little bit too adult-looking, um, like soft, muted colors, just subtle references to plants and animals. I could see why that approach would be appealing if it does actually have a calming effect on children and makes them sleep more or something, but it's not very fun and I wanted a fun kids room, so I leaned a little bit more towards these mid-century kids room designs, at least in terms of the bright colors, the mixed patterns, and the really like overt themes. Uh, the overall look for this room does end up being a little less sleek and like catalog order looking than those mid-century inspiration photos, and I do still want to create something that is more like those photos in another build, but as you can see with this room, the furniture is a little older and more traditional looking, but all the textiles and patterns throughout the room are bright and themed, so overall I don't think that this room would be mistaken for an adult's room or for an office. It's very much a kid's room, which is what I was going for. It's just got some older heirloom type of furniture in it. Um, and after all the final touches on the nursery, the last bedroom to redo in the home is the primary bedroom on the other side of the house. I think it's actually a bit smaller than the nursery, but it has the ensuite bathroom, so it's the primary bedroom. Like I noted earlier, I did use the color palette generator again to guide the design for this room, and the palette I went with is pretty gross. I tried to start with Svetlana's favorite color, which is called Spiceberry in The Sims. It's like a warm, purpley magenta, which is also the grandson Topher's favorite color, so maybe favorite color is a genetic trait in The Sims 3. I don't actually know. But anyway, that was already a difficult starting point. I end up using that color for the bedspread eventually, um, and then in addition to Spiceberry, the palette consists of the kind of dusty pink that's on the wall paneling there, the light green which is on the drapes, black which is on the curtain rods and the light fixtures and whatnot, and the off-white which is on all the trim. It doesn't work, and through all my tinkering with the room, I don't discover any magic way to make these colors get along. I'm sure someone with actual design skill could have pulled it off, um, but I have no knowledge of those little design tools and tricks, so what you're seeing now doesn't really get better by the end. But I don't back out of this color combo. Um, I did fully commit, and I had fun with it, which is what counts. So once the uh, larger items like the walls, the rug, the bed uh, was all set, I tried to pull the room together with the lamps, the decor, some wall art, you know how it goes. Uh, but it does end up being pretty ugly. Like, a uh, unique ugly, at least, though. It's not a generic ugly. I do go really generic with the design of the next room, though, because uh, it's just the laundry room. So, moving on to that room, I don't usually put laundry rooms in my sim houses because I think laundry is just annoying to play with in the sims. As someone who lives in an apartment building with shared coin-op laundry, laundry is enough of a headache in my own life that I don't really want to play at it in my free time. But since this is based on a real house that had a real laundry room, I did keep a tiny little laundry room off of the kitchen. I might get rid of it if I play with this family later. The last room that I redo in the main house is this ensuite primary bathroom. There is another bathroom on the other side of the house that is a full bathroom, and I redid that one too, but it's real boring. You don't need to see that. Uh, I did not use the color palette generator for this room, and that was a mistake because 
I was really lost on the design. I spent a lot of time in the color wheel. And reflecting on that, I guess just as an apartment dweller, in my experience, bathrooms have been the rooms that just provide the highest concentration of opportunities for landlords to cheap out, like from plumbing fixtures to lighting, flooring, towel racks, counters, etc. Just so many places where they can and do go with the che- cheapest possible option, which tends to result in just an irredeemably depressing space. So all that to say, I've never really bothered to put much effort into bathroom design in real life, so I hadn't thought much about what I like in a bathroom and what makes a cute bathroom, at least not at the time of this video. I have thought more about it since then, so hopefully better bathrooms in the future, but uh, for this particular bathroom it did take me a long time to get something that I just thought looked decent. Luckily, I did have a much clearer vision for what I wanted for the next part of their model, which is the little cabin in the back for Becky and Topher. Um, a lot of larger parcels of land in the area where this real house, like on Zillow, is located uh, will have a, a main house and then one or two studio-sized ADUs on the property. And uh, the listing for this house even mentioned the possibility of adding an ADU, so I guess the North Coast is like a decent area to start a commune if you have the funding, uh, or just for a multi-generational family like the Bakers. For this little back house, I just wanted the basic straightforward cabin vibe. There's wood shingles on the exterior, wood paneling on the interior, a stone floor through the kitchen and bathroom, and then wood floors for all the rest of the living spaces. It's a full standalone house, so it has a kitchen, bathroom, though you'd have to use the sink in the kitchen for that, uh, a living slash bedroom, and then a tiny little separate nursery room for Topher. And I think that's like the ideal setup for an adult that has to move back in with parents after being out on their own, because it's not like staying in your childhood bedroom with this kind of a space you would maintain a little bit of the privacy and autonomy of living independently. And just to clarify, I'm not making up Baker family lore here. It's in their description. Um, their family description says, Svetlana and Heathcliff loved their daughter Becky, so of course they took her in when she and her son Topher needed a place to stay. But will they be able to enjoy their retirement with a noisy toddler in the house? So that's their story. Luckily, with this build, the noisy toddler in question doesn't necessarily have to be in their house because Becky basically has her own little starter home back here. I'd be down to live in this little home for sure. It's a little bit small for three dogs, which I think is my ideal number of dogs to have. I don't actually have three dogs, <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty perfect. I also don't know that I'd go with that bright yellow on the kitchen cabinets if it was my own cabin, but yellow is Becky's favorite color, so I wanted to incorporate it there in the kitchen, and then I do also use yellow on the bedding in Topher's crib a little later. Um, this house isn't actually the only space on the lot that's specifically for Becky. There are two outbuildings that are on the other side of the property, which I don't think I showed earlier. One is like a smaller kind of tool shed size house with like white paneling on the outside and the other one's big like almost barn size and it has like corrugated metal siding. After I finish up this cabin um, I go over to the other side of the property and I turn that smaller like tool shed size space into a like music practice space for Becky. So um, moving on to that smaller shed, Becky has the golden tongue, golden fingers lifetime aspiration, which is to uh, max the charisma and guitar skills. And I think she starts with a guitar in her inventory. I could be wrong on that. But anyway, it seems like she's sort of pointed towards the music career path. Um, and with her parents sinking their nest egg into this remodel, essentially, she would have to have some success in the music industry to keep the family afloat. So I just made a little practice space for her back here because the cabin is a bit too small to fit a bunch of instruments in. I would think she wouldn't want to be playing music next to a sleeping toddler anyway. Um, but the other 
barn-sized outbuilding I use for a garage and then a little fish room in the back for Heathcliff. He has the presenting the perfect private aquarium lifetime aspiration, which is to have at least 13 different species of perfect fish in fish bowls. So I imagine he'll be spending a lot of his retirement collecting fish, so I wanted to give him a room for that. And with that room, I did take some inspiration from real life, um, because my own father, who is also retired, has a fish room that he built in the garage of my parents' house, because he raises, like, a couple different species of little fish, like this one, just as a hobby. They aren't much to look at, but apparently they are all live bearers, meaning they don't lay eggs. They retain the eggs in their bodies and then give birth to little baby fish. So it's very not like other fish of them. And kind of neat. But anyway, Heathcliff's fish room, quite a bit bigger than my dad's. <laughs> it's got three large fish tanks. Um, there's a little reading nook in the corner there. And I do give him a desk and a computer for office activities. Presumably Svetlana would use the computer in the guest bedroom as her office. So everyone has their little space. The last things I would do on this house are the exterior and the landscaping. Um, this cute little yellow cottage is pretty much the look I was going for. Very warm and inviting, gives off kind of grandma's house vibes. Uh, I wanted a garden that looked cared for with lots of different flowers and things. These probably aren't the plant species that you'd typically see in the area of this home, like in real life, like on Zillow. Um, but the Sims options for plants are pretty limiting, so I just tried to make do with what was there. This backyard is sort of like the connection between the main house and the cabin, so I wanted there to be a nice space for outdoor entertaining here, so everyone could sort of meet on neutral ground, hang out, and then retreat back to their separate quarters. But anyway, um, we're nearing the end of the remodel here. I'll do a little before and after montage at the end, but if anyone out there is still watching, thank you. Uh, like I mentioned before, both versions of this house are available on The Sims 3 Exchange and linked below if you want to download them. Um, if you do a remodel of the before version as well, I mean, I'd be interested to see what you do with it. So uh, reach out if you want to share that. Uh, if you found this video, you can find me on the internet. I'm not hiding or anything. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this house and this video, so I will probably do more of these Zillow remodels in The Sims 3. Uh, now, I don't play The Sims 4. I do have it, um, but it doesn't do much for me. So, uh, this is my first video, so I don't really have any other content to point you towards, but... I guess if you do like watching Sims 3 build videos, I'd recommend Into the Simulations channel. Um, those are my favorite build videos to watch, and they're actually good at it, uh, not like what you just saw. So. Anyway, I don't know why I'm giving you recommendations of what to do with your time, that's a weird impulse. So I'm going to cut it off here and stop talking. The before and after montage is coming right up. It's pretty cute. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs>